Hi, welcome back. This is lecture 16 of uh, the CS Theory Toolkit course. This lecture is about expander graphs. So uh, expander graphs, what are they? Uh, well, in fact, we mentioned them a little bit in the last lecture. These are essentially graphs uh, that are highly connected, yet which have not too many edges. So they have lots of applications in computer science theory. They're almost ubiquitous. Uh, this resource I've mentioned here is a wonderful uh, survey about them. It tells you most everything you need to know. I should also mention that when I was a graduate student, I found uh, expander graphs really mysterious and I didn't feel like I understood them very well. So hopefully I'll get the chance to demystify them for you a little bit. Okay, so there is not one precise uh, universal definition of expander graphs. It's uh, a little bit more of a concept. So we can make precise definitions, but let's start out a little bit more um, at a high level. So roughly speaking, what are expander graphs? So an expander is generally means a graph uh, which have three properties. First, um, the graph should be highly connected. Okay, so it shouldn't be a disconnected graph and it shouldn't you know, have some vertices that are you know, just dangling off with only one connection to the rest of the graph. Every set of vertices um, should be well connected to all the other vertices in some sense. We'll be more precise shortly. Uh, the second property of an expander graph is that it's sparse, meaning not too many edges. So you can sort of get the ultimate super connected graph if you take the complete graph, which has um, on the order of n squared vertices in an n vertex graph. But when people talk about expander graphs, um, they usually insist that the graphs be sparse. Most uh, ideally, they should have only a linear number of edges, big O of n edges. Okay, so this is a bit in tension with the idea that all the vertices are well connected to each other. Uh, it's in tension with having not too many edges. Okay, so these are uh, two key properties of expanders, um, but there's one more property. Typically, when people talk about expanders, uh, they want to use them in applications, and we'll talk about applications today uh, to error correcting codes and uh, de-randomization. And almost always in these applications, what you really want is an explicit graph. So why do I say explicit? Well, that's in contrast with a random graph. So as I'll mention shortly, if you just choose a random graph with n vertices and you know big O of n edges, with high probability, it will be highly connected. So that seems to be like a good expander graph. But when people are talking about expander graphs, they don't like uh, these randomized constructions. They usually want um, an explicit, deterministically created graph. Okay, so those are the three high-level components of expander graphs, and we can be more precise, and we will, but let's talk about them uh, a little bit more in turn. Uh, I'm actually gonna start with property two here, sparse, because it's the easiest one to talk about. So what does sparse mean? Well, I should mention that uh, when in the context of expander graphs, we'll be talking about n vertex graphs, and as always in computer science uh, theory, Usually you don't just want, you know, one graph or an expander graph uh, on a thousand vertices. Um, generally you want to talk about um, families of graphs, graphs on larger and larger number of vertices. You want to say you have an expander graph family if you have, um, you know, a sequence of graphs on a larger and larger number of vertices n, which is uh, somehow sparse and each graph is somehow sparse and highly connected. Uh, so what I mean by that in more detail is the following. We're going to focus our attention only on regular graphs for simplicity. That's typical in the study of expander graphs. As we saw in the spectral graph theory lectures, everything is 50% more pleasant and simple if you focus on regular graphs, so we will. So we'll be talking about uh, deregular graphs, and the sparsity will refer to the fact that we'll typically insist that D is an absolute constant, which I can write as order one, and this is with respect to n going to infinity. Okay, so you should really think of d as like a universal constant, like three and or 10 or 50 that you fix. And then you're gonna consider um, larger and larger graphs, each of which is, you know, deregular. So in particular, if you have a deregular n vertex graph, it means the number of edges is, well, I guess it's uh, d times n over two. Let me write it like this, d over two times n. Okay, so, uh, what it means is you have an n vertex graph, the number of edges is a fixed constant, d over two times n. So as I said before, you know, we think of these as um, graphs with uh, a linear number of edges. 
Uh, okay, so that's sparse. Um, take that off. Let me talk a little bit now about highly connected. Uh, okay, so what do I mean by highly connected? Well, again, um, there's a few ways you could quantify this. Uh, one way we could quantify it, in fact, is using this notion of minimum conductance from the previous lectures. So uh, we looked at there, phi g, this was the minimum conductance, this was the minimum over all sets of vertices s, um, whose size is not zero, and we look at up to half the number of vertices in our set s of the conductance of s, and what was the conductance of s? It was the uh, fraction of edges um, like u v with u in uh, s and v outside s divided by um, the fractional size of s, the fraction of vertices in s. Okay, so this was some measure of, in the regular case, if you were taking, gonna take a random vertex from the set s and take one random step from it, what is the probability that step would take you outside s? Okay, so it's, uh, the conductance, you know, could also be called the expansion of the set s. It's, you know, the, the probability you get outside the set s when you take one random step from one random vertex in s. Okay, so it's a number between zero and one, and, um, you know, the set has good expansion if this number is big. And uh, this phi g, the minimum conductance of the graph, looks at the minimum of this expansion over all sets of vertices uh, s of size between zero and half the vertices. So here's a picture. This is the graph g. And uh, this is the gra set of vertices s. Okay, if uh, you're interested in sets of size bigger than n over two, then you should really look at the complement set. And we're sort of looking at the fraction of edges that like do this, that are on the boundary of S, divided by the number of vertices that are in S themselves. Yep. Okay, we want this to be uh, large. And one way to say that um, the graph is highly connected or a good expander is just to say that uh, the condition might be phi of g is at least 0.01, okay? Or you can, you know, fix some absolute constant epsilon that's bigger than zero, like 0.01 or 0.1, and insist that this minimum conductance be at least epsilon. That would be an epsilon expander. Um, on the other hand, what I want to say is uh, it's best to not necessarily be too picky at this stage at the exact definition of expansion. Um, I should have um, added, by the way, that uh, the idea here is you fix an absolute constant again, like 0.01, and then you want um, larger and larger families of graphs that all have this conductance being at least this absolute constant independent of n. Okay, let me go back to what I was saying. Um, you know, it's not best to be not too picky about the exact definition. So here we kind of looked at the number of edges on the boundary of S divided by the number of vertices in S. Um, that's called edge expansion. But it's also reasonable to look at um, the number of uh, boundary vertices for S. For S, uh, let me make that, oops. Uh, divided by you know, the number of vertices in S. So a boundary vertex is just a vertex that has at least one edge into S. Okay, it's not quite the same concept as boundary edges because like a vertex on the boundary of S could have more than one edge going into S. But it's pretty related because we're focusing on D regular graphs where D is constant. Um, so the number of edges touching each vertex is at most a constant, so it can change these ratios by at most um, D. So, you know, hoping that this concept, this quantity, the fraction of vertices, let me just make it white, um, you know, is at least some absolute constant epsilon is another reasonable way to define expansion. Uh, one more thing that's a, being a bit flexible, you see it's some, in some sense harder to have good expansion the bigger the set S is. Um, you know, if you have the expansion of like one, the edge expansion of one vertex, it's always um, one, which is as good as possible because uh, 
um, the probability of escaping from that vertex is um, 100% in a, a random walk, unless you have self loops, which we're going to ignore also here. Uh, so, but the larger the set is, maybe the harder it is to expand. So maybe sometimes you're a little bit flexible on insisting that this uh, size of the set go all the way up to half n. Maybe you only want, sometimes you only want expansion of sets um, s with, uh, I don't know, s at most 0.01n. Okay, again, where this is some fixed constant. Okay, so these are notions of uh, highly connected. We'll make uh, some of them even more precise later. Uh, so now, so far, you know, I've said that we want graphs or arbitrarily large graphs, uh, large, large n graphs that are sparse. You know, every uh, vertex has a constant number of neighbors. It's deregular and which are highly connected. And it's not too hard to show that random graphs have this property. Um, it's actually just a simple application of the probabilistic method, especially if you're not trying to get um, too picky about the parameters. So this was an idea um, due to Pinsker in 73. You can show something like the following. Fix any uh, d that's at least 3, and then there will exist some, you know, let's say epsilon 0, which depends on d. A, well, let's just call it epsilon, and it's strictly positive. So if d is 3, maybe it's um, 0.0001. If d is 10, maybe it's 0.001. Let's not get not too excited about the parameters. Um, such that uh, for all uh, n greater than or equal to some constant n0, which also depends on d, a random uh, n vertex deregular graph is like an epsilon expander. So let's just say has uh, this minimum conductance or minimum expansion, at least epsilon. Um, so that that is a theorem that's not too hard to prove. It's sort of um, the probabilistic method. Um, it's mildly easier to prove when you're talking about um, bipartite expanders, which I'll talk about shortly. But anyway, it's still not hard to prove. You know, for every set S that you're worried about expansion, you also consider every small set T, which might um, unfortunately have the property that it captures all of S's edges. But you show then a random deregular graph that's very rare. And you can, it's so rare that you can even union bound over all pairs of sets S and T. Okay, so this uh, simple theorem shows that um, arbitrarily large expander graphs exist, um, even for degree d as small as 3. By the way, you cannot make the degree much smaller than 3, well, any smaller than 3. Um, if you take a random two regular graph, like what's a two regular graph? Well, it's just a collection of cycles. So if you take a random two regular graph, um, first of all, it probably won't even be connected. And even if like by a miracle it's connected, it's like one giant Hamiltonian cycle, um, this has very bad expansion because if you take, say, half of the vertices for your set S, then, you know, they have a linear number of vertices, but only two edges on the boundary. So their conductance is proportional to one over n. Okay, but three, as soon as you have a three regular graph, you have the opportunity to be an expander. And in fact, you are if you choose the graph with high probability. Uh... Which leads me to the final desiderata, m, uh, which is explicit. So having these sparse, highly um, interconnected graphs is great for applications, but often you don't want just uh, a random graph. You don't want just the existence of a highly uh, connected sparse graph. You really want, you know, you want to say like, here's my n. You deterministically give me a, a graph on n vertices. That's a great expander. Um, so, uh, yeah, let me say here, uh, explicit means that the graphs, let's say adjacency matrix or adjacency list a G on N vertices should be constructible in, um, deterministic, uh, 
polynomial in n time. Okay, so yeah, it's not uh, just a randomized existence proof. You can really, you know, get your hands on an n vertex expander graph in uh, deterministic poly time. And that's uh, quite useful for applications. In fact, believe it or not, there's a even stronger notion of explicitness, which will be crucial for some applications, such as applications in derandomization. Let me say what that is. So uh, to say that um, some graph families are strongly explicit, basically means that in deterministic polynomial time, you can construct a graph on two to the n vertices, which is a good expander. Now, uh, you have to think a little bit about what that means. How can you, in polynomial time, create a or describe a, a graph on two to the n vertices? Um, well, you describe it implicitly. You describe it by an algorithm that can um, compute, the, let's say, the adjacency list situation in polynomial time. So what this uh, really means is, um, given n, uh, you can um, have an algorithm that takes as input uh, uh, the name of a vertex, u, and a number between 1 and d, representing like the index into a neighbor, and uh, outputs, you want your deterministic algorithm, uh, the ith neighbor of u in the graph in poly log n time. And it should be deterministic. Okay, so graph uh, family is strongly explicit. If you have some algorithm that it's sort of like the algorithm is, I'm thinking of a graph on um, exponentially many vertices. Well, Let's write this as a capital N. Uh, think of capital N as extremely large. Uh, the algorithm can take in the name of a vertex, which requires only log of capital N bits to write down, plus this you know, number between 1 and 3, if D is 3, that's not a big deal. And it tells you the name of the ith neighbor of the vertex U, which is also a log capital N bit string. And it does it all in poly log uh, poly of log n time. Okay, so in some sense it means you have access to an exponentially large graph even though you're a polynomial time algorithm. Okay, so uh, what are we going to do in this lecture? Um, I'm going to make the, all of this a little bit more explicit and we're going to first actually talk about some applications of expander graphs without yet knowing that um, explicit good expander graphs exist. And then after that, I'll show you uh, some things about the art and science of constructing explicit expander graphs. So before I get into the applications, um, I want to mention like one um, completely concrete um, kind of an expander graph that will be useful for the applications. And um, this kind of expander graph will be a, a bipartite twist on what I've talked about so far. So let me give you uh, the picture here. So this is sort of a um, bit of a bipartite expansion twist. So in uh, the bipartite expanders I'll, I'll talk about, um, you have a bipartite graph with uh, one vertex set U and the other vertex set V. Okay, you can think of them as both having N vertices. And to be a good expander is similar, but uh, we're only going to talk about um, left expansion, expansion from left to right, and regularity from left to right. So we're going to be looking at graphs that are left to regular. So each vertex on the left has degree d. And to be a good expander will be to say that for every set of vertices s here on the left side, um, as long as you're at most, I don't know, a constant fraction of uh, u, the size of u, when you look at the neighborhood, sorry, this diagram is a little confusing, but if you look at this, which is the, um, what I'll call the neighborhood of s, that's all the vertices that have on the right, which have a neighbor back in uh, s, 
Um, to be a good bipartite expander is to say that the uh, cardinality of the neighborhood of S is at least some, you know, epsilon fraction of the cardinality of S. Okay, so if you have a set S, um, in principle, the neighborhood set could be of size D times cardinality of S, if like every single vertex in S went to D completely disjoint neighbors. Um, but we won't be that greedy. We'll just hope that the neighborhood set of uh, every set S is uh, at least a constant fraction of the size of S. For all sets S of size, um, some constant fraction up to a, a constant fraction of the ver vertex size of U. Oh boy, actually I've said this wrong. Uh, what I really want is, uh... oh no, I said it right, no problem, never mind. Great. Um, so this is like a slight twist on uh, expansion, but a similar concept, and I uh, bring it up. Um, it's a little annoying to have to bring it up, but uh, you know it'd be easier just to focus on the first you know notion of expansions for regular generic graphs and conductance. But this will be the version that's like convenient to explain the applications. Um, so uh, let me even focus on one explicit set of parameters so that we can uh, have it on hand when we talk about applications. And uh, here's the picture uh, that you should have. So uh, actually, I think a person called Basiligo showed that um, bipart expander, bipart expanders of the type I'm about to mention um, exist if you pick them randomly. So a, in the parameter setting there, we have n vertices here and n vertices here. And we're looking at expansion. We have a deregular graph. We're looking at expansion from left to right. And uh, we can fix any D to be at least 64. And Basilaga showed that uh, for any D that's at least uh, 64, um, the size of the neighborhood set of S is at least 0.8 times D times the size of S for all sets S uh, of cardinality at most um, 0 0.02 over D times N. Okay, so let me just uh, comment on this. It says you can uh, have D any fixed constant that's at least uh, 64. Great. And this uh, amount of expansion is quite strong. As I said before, um, if you have a set S on the left, it expands uh, to the right. The maximum possible number of vertices in the neighborhood set is D times cardinality of S. So this expansion is great. It's 80% of that. And it even works for all sets S of size up to some you know, constant, small constant, 0.02, divided by D times N. And this divided by D is also necessary because if you're insisting that the expansion be like a constant times d times the size, you know, there are only n vertices on the right-hand side here, so um, up to constants, you can't uh, do better than this. Okay, so as I said, um, Basiligo back in the 70s actually showed that with these specific parameters, a uh, random bipartite graph, where you're just for every vertex on the left here, you pick uh, d random neighbors for it on the right, has these properties. Um, in fact, uh, for application reasons, um, I'm even going to uh, mention that you can have a slightly smaller size set of vertices V on the right. This is U, this is V. Uh, for the application I want to show, I want the size of the vertex set on the right to be a little bit smaller than the size of the vertex set on the left. So I'm going to pick it to be size uh, 3 quarters N. And notice that that makes my life even harder if I want an expander because the left hand or the right hand side is now smaller. There's like less space for the the right hand side vertex vertices to expand into. Okay, so it's even it's even cooler if I can make the right hand side uh, three quarters n. And great, I think if I did the calculations on my paper right uh, earlier today, Basiligo showed that a random uh, graph with all these properties. Um, well, a random graph, a deregular graph, has uh, this property with high probability when the vertex sides are, sizes are n and 3 quarters n. And if I got those numbers a little bit wrong, you know, don't quote this uh, lecture for exact numbers. Uh, so this is the kind of uh, bipartite expander graph that I'm going to show you um, 
can be used to get two cool applications. One application in uh, coding theory and one application in de-randomization. And for both of these applications, um, you know, Basiligo's result that a random graph has these properties is not good enough. Um, particularly for the de-randomization application, like by definition, if your task is de-randomization, you don't want to do anything randomized. And also for efficiency and practicality in coding theory, you also don't want like random codes, you want explicit codes. Uh, so that's sort of motivating, um, you know, the desire for explicit bipartite expander graphs like this. And uh, one might ask, okay, well, uh, do we know how to explicitly get uh, these kinds of bipartite expanders that I tell you are so useful for applications? And roughly the story is as follows, uh, roughly, Thanks to you know technology developed over the last uh, couple decades, for I would say for almost all um, expander variants, you know bipartite, not bipartite, edge expansion, vertex expansion, um, we know uh, explicit constructions that almost match uh, what randomized constructions get. That almost match parameters of randomized constructions. Okay, so I put uh, almost in quotes there. And, um, you know, uh, you kind of have to check the literature if you want really, um, you know, strong, close matching of your favorite particular expander variant. But, um, you know, generally we have uh, very good explicit expanders, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, how we get them at uh, the last part of this lecture. But let me just uh, mention that for this explicit uh, case where I told you I'm going to show you some applications, uh, okay, we don't have explicit expanders that achieve exactly these parameters, but it comes close. So uh, we have, what I will tell you is we do have um, explicit constructions where let's say d equals 64. And instead of this three quarters, maybe you have 0.9999 times n. And instead of this 0.02, maybe you have 0.00001. Uh, but that's it. Actually, notice that I did not change this 0.8. Um, we can really get uh, the number 0.8 there. You can really get any fixed constant that's um, less than one. And for one of the applications, it'll actually be important that 0.8 is bigger than 0.75. Um, but okay, these two other constants, you know, they're not so important. They make some of the parameters worse, um, but it'll be fine for us. Okay, so we, uh, just, just to say we do have explicit constructions of these kind of bipartite expander graphs, which uh, are going to be good for these two applications I'll show you in coding theory and de-randomization.